Peace. Peace, peace. What's good, man? I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, give thanks. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure being here. My so, pleasure. for those of y'all that are tuning in, this is the first episode of my podcast, Your Highest Self, which is where we appeal to the highest self of the viewer, and we appeal to you from our highest selves. And so, I chose for my first guest, somebody I consider a big brother, um, somebody that's walked the path before me, and somebody that has been blacklisted and uh, uh, gatekept long before I experienced such things. And that is the phenomenal, uh, the luminary, the, the independent <laughs> Professor Grip. Oh, good thanks. Blacklisted, blacklisted would be a better terminology. I knew he was going to say that. I got you. I knew he was going to say that. Okay. I knew he was going to say that. <clears throat> so, let's get right into that. Let's just, that's that's a perfect. Uh, oh yeah, I'm honored, a, I'm honored to be on the blacklist. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah yeah in, in a way, but you yeah. know we know the list was written not by black folks. You're right. Yeah. So um, the first question that I have for you, and I really want to get right into the questions is, um, what has it been like being on that list, and and how do, how do you think you got onto that list? Well, it's not it's not uh it's not hard to get on the list. Being black, remaining your true, authentic self, doing what uh, you need to do for yourself and your people, um, being very independent, being an independent thinker, moving at your your own uh, your own uh, uh, time, in your own space, the way you move um, can easily get you put on that list. Aligning yourself with other individuals that um, that are on the list, whether they are in the elder realm or the ancestral realm, um, can easily land you on that list. Try to do something um, in the black community um, for yourself and your people, specifically something that meets our needs um, that these other people don't agree with. You understand what I'm saying? Then you start getting written off like what he's saying and doing this. Is threatening our security or our national security can easily land you on that list. Kwame Nkrumah ended up on that list. Um, uh, Patrice Lumumba ended up on that list. Malcolm ended up on that list. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is on that list. The Black Panther Party is on that list. Asada Shakur is on that list. I, 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 Che Guevara, I can go on and on and on. So you're in good company? I'm in very, very, very good company. Very good company. Did you know that when you began your journey? No, I was unaware of a list. Um, and a lot of times when you accept your mission and your assignment, um, you grow into it. You don't readily accept it knowing everything. You grow into it and this becomes your life experience. And then after a while you kind of know how to move. And mine is uniquely different because mine was in the realm of music, coming through the filter of music, coming through the medium of music, having to use music to reach the masses, to educate people on that level, in that spirit. Yeah, that was one of the first questions that I got that I was mm -hmm. asked to ask you, which is what led you to uh, Islam and to Public Enemy? That's a two-part well, question. Two-part question and, and very uh. detailed. What led me to uh, Islam? Had a lot to do with my one of my old two of my oldest brothers, um, Anwar, beautiful, uh, beautiful brother, very intelligent, very spirited brother. Has, has two master degrees. Man, he's a master librarian, mm. and from him, spending time with him, um, I've learned how to build a library, and then everything else, including Islam, has opened up to me. Um, and then my brother that's right next to me, my brother Michael. Um, and of course, another spirited brother, steeped in Islam, knowing his stuff, very spirited. Um, those are the brothers that helped guide me, guided me into understanding Islam on a global scale. But the militancy aspect of uh, propensity, rather, that lies dormant in me. I think the nation of Islam called me, but that's what they first introduced me to. So I was already there in the first resurrection of mm. the Nation of Islam under the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Oh, you was there back then? I was there, there right. Mm. So thanks to my two brothers, yeah. So, public enemy then? And then the public enemy thing, I think what I did was 
I kind of morphed that um, information and spirit into what we was doing as far as um, me formulating what that show is going to look like, what the energy is going to be about once we travel around the country, um, aspects of our mission, which kind of linked into what the overall public enemy mission was, but you know, uh, several members of the group, their, uh, their mission also, their life's paths also, it just kind of, it worked. Not that we asked for it to be that way, it just, mm. it worked. So you end up with lyrics like, Farrah comes a prophet and I think you ought to listen to. You end up with stuff like that. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you end up with the lyrics and you end up with sampling Ava Muhammad or Tom Todd or Jesse Jackson or the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan or Khalid Muhammad in front of one song. You end up with that stuff once you bring that spirit to into the room. So did that work in the industry because the industry was open to it or were you struggling to make it make it work every time? Oh, uh, this is a short, very short answer to that. We didn't give a rat's ass. Mm. Fuck the industry. Mm. We was gonna do it anyway. We were making rebel music, man. We was making music that was going against the grain anyway, so why not? Even the way that the sonic landscape of everything was, right. like the way that uh the, the production was, it was like a symphony of like it just sounded different. You cannot lose when you got um a, a pot of Gumbo made up of James Brown, Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, samples from the Nation of Islam and other black speakers and, and, and that kind of thing. Of course, with Tower Power horns, or right. you just might have some, you know what I'm saying, some gritty stuff happening underneath. You know what I'm saying? Which was, which was a beautiful thing. Slide the Family Stone riff, you know, or Boosie Collins kind of bass thing yeah. happening. You, how you gonna lose with that? Yeah. Who was the name of the production team that I... I'm, I'm, the I'm, Bomb Squad, the man. The Bomb Squad. Yep. Hank Shockley, Keith Shockley, Hank Eric, Shockley. Eric, that's what I was thinking of. Eric Vietnam, Sattler. Of course, Chuck D was part of that whole thing. And, you know, then we had Johnny Juice, Terminator X, DJing. Um, I think I brought up the rear with the Professor Griffin, and the S1Ws. You know what I'm saying? When I, was, when I was young, mm -hmm. that's what really, like, got me. I said, man, I ain't never seen nobody drilling in a music video. Like, right, they got right, their own right. soldiers? Yeah. yeah we had they got their own soldiers. This yeah. ain't no dance troupe. Like, I was used right. to seeing MTV with, like, people just doing little right. dances. But, like, nah, they wasn't dancing. We had soldiers, but we had a mini army, man. You understand what I'm saying? Then the sprinkle all the flavor, flavor element on top of all of that, it just worked, man. Yeah, it so, worked. So with that being said, I apologize for any background noise and any of the other. Oh no, I'm, I'm 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 good, man. Yeah. yeah, I am hearing some strange shit, but I'm y'all may ignore that, but yeah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm managing, you know. Yeah, it's, you it's, gotta manage that, yeah, man, yeah, cause yeah. yeah. Um, anything else go down? I'm gonna rearrange this motherfucking furniture. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead, talk to me, man. So, um, what would you say is the definition of a public enemy today? Hmm. That's a very, very interesting question because in a very refined, looking through a very refined lens, Shabbos Gambino mm. is a public enemy, bro. Mm. With everything that he's doing and the way that he, he's doing it, you understand what yeah. I'm saying? Um, I was wondering if there was any other artists that you're really rocking with right now, like this, oh, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this artist you, you love and support right now. Uh, yeah, and he, he's one of them. Mm. Um, the whole movement of I'm a piano mm. could be a public enemy because it's it's not disruptive in the way that we normally look at disruptions. It's disruptive simply because they're forced now to give out a Grammy to recognize it, mm. and then that opens that the, that's the door that opens up the door to the rest of the artists that we would never know coming out of. Um, West Africa, coming out of South Africa, and other parts of the country, um, yeah. the continent. Yeah. So, yeah, so artists like that will probably pose a silent, quiet, vibrational threat. A movement like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, and then there's just other artists that are bubbling up and coming up, un that, that's coming up, that we're hearing certain things about, but they haven't made it to that level. I don't want to use the term break in the industry. Right. Because there's a whole thing that comes with the, the idea of you having to break into something. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, or even break out of it. Because mm -hmm. most people that get break in <laughs> try to break out of it. You understand what I'm saying? So 
there's some artists, man, that, you know, I went to a release party last night, Cambada. Mm-hmm. Um, would be considered yeah. a public enemy. Yeah. Um, it's a real one right there. Um, Brother Rich's artist, Cambada. It's, 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 uh, and been at it for a while, too. He's been at it for a minute. Exactly. But that's a beautiful thing because when you're looking at a woman about to give birth to a child, you look at an artist like him that's about to give birth to a, a sound that might spark a movement. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? It takes time to give birth to it. you got to feed it. It almost has to come out of the womb running. Mm. Already knowing, mm. already understanding. You understand what I'm saying? And we see that in the animal kingdom on the continent. Mm-hmm. Um, when they drop them, them, them babies, man, they come out running because of what they're up against. Other animals coming to feed. Right, right. They got to come out running. So that's what's happening a lot of times now with this fast paced world that we live in. It's happening now as we speak. Yep, yep. Out of all the jewels you've learned through life and mathematics and your journey, mm-hmm. What is your favorite concept, Sura, teaching, or life lesson? I think it's a combination of, of, of them, and I think I have uh, managed to not have only have them grow on me, but me grow up with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, some things I've always, I always say, um, I am, because we are, therefore I am, which you already know, it comes, you know, comes up out of that West African tradition. Um, the whole idea of the divinity in me salutes and celebrates the divinity in you. And these are some of the things that um, there's no big I and little you. These kind of sayings always kind of are part of my my, my conversation. So when you start pulling from the five percent uh, nation of gods and earth teachings, whether it's the nation of Islam teachings, whether it's um, the the Ifa or the Akan, or the Airway, or whatever tradition that you're in, whether it's martial arts, whether it's, you know, Eastern traditions and that kind of, whether it's the Vedas, whatever. Um, even when, um, even when uh, I met my, not met my wife, but uh, we, we started our journey together, knowing and understanding that she's uh, um, her own individual um, on a journey of, uh, on a path and a journey of the self through the self back to the self. These things become uh, a part of some of the things that I kind of incorporate in my daily talks, whether it's with myself, her, her family, friends, or just the larger, greater community. Mm. The perfect segue into the next question, which is, what's the most impactful part of your daily regimen? Um, I think waking up. <laughs> <laughs> just waking up. Waking up and knowing that you know, I can breathe another breath of fresh air. I, I know that, you know, I can get and continue uh, on the path and continue uh, my assignment. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so gratitude. Gratitude, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing and understanding that I'm still on my way up, kind of activating the higher self. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That energy is working, still working itself through my chakras. Um, the higher self has been activated. Now I need to, you know help uh, kind of transform it, of course, and then transmit that energy to individuals, to the greater community. Hmm. So then when you and I meet, or me and other people meet, there's certain things we don't even have to discuss. We don't necessarily have to discuss this page for page. Right. You and I can have a conversation. This, this is a life's work. That's a life's work. My work is a life's work. Do you understand what I'm saying? We wrote about it. And there's some things we wrote in the books that we have yet to have other people experience. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then we could take this, give them the book, and help and guide them through it. Mm. Okay, so that leads into how do you keep your peace? Because you're dealing with this, a lot of lower selves out here. Exactly. So there's a lot of people that's still operating in the lower self. Right, because they're not the, just the lower self. They have a higher self. They have a lower you understand that they have a higher self. You've got to reintroduce them back to themselves. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I just know how to move. Not like anyone don't know how to move. I move the way I move. You understand what I'm saying? Um, if I have to move in a situation and help navigate it, I do that. And if I have to rearrange this goddamn furniture and move out of the space, I'm going to do that too. I just know how to move. Mm. So so when you're dealing with somebody that's acting on their lower self, like what's, what's your best way to keep your peace and move? 
accordingly. I, I just basically try to get out of that particular environment because you never know what situation might cause you to act in. Um, you know, sometimes you might act at, you know, other than your own self. So yeah. situations may cause you to kind of act other than your own self. But, but, you know, it's protection. A lot of times we do things and we think of security first. We protect myself, protect my family. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. I mean, but that's spiritually also. Mm -hmm. I don't... A, a brother tried to have a conversation at... Uh, Home Depot the other day with me about religion. I'm like, bro, we in aisle 13 at goddamn Home Depot. Oh, bro. yeah. I definitely not, asked about that. I'm not doing that. Yeah, how do you deal with being publicly accessible and, 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 and recognition and, and I, notoriety? I think the creator has deposited something in me that some people have and some people recognize that I have it. I have this way about me where it's like, you know, it shows on my face I'm uh, not to be fucked with. Plain and simple. It's like, bro, come on. I said, bro, that's your path. It's not necessarily my path. Although we're all trying to get to seven, three, three and four does it sometimes, five and two do it sometimes, one six and six one, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. zero and seven do it sometimes, or sometimes just kind of not at all. It's got to let people just kind of find their way. And some people need to bump their head, man, when they get the math wrong. Mm. You're trying to take um, five and six and make equal seven. It's not going to happen, bro. Mm. And some people need to unlearn to learn. Hmm. Okay, so based on what I've been going through with my experience with the studio thing, with the uh, and and not being able to get the kind of space that I I I, I was planning on, at least ma imagining. Um, who would you say are the, is the bigger problem? And, and and one question is, you know, what is it like? to be on that list where you're, you're persona non grata in some spaces and is it worth it? We talked about that a little bit and I think you covered that but would you, who would you say is the bigger problem? Those who shuck and jive or those who sponsor the shucking and jive? I think they have to share equal responsibility. Um, the ones that shuck and jive know exactly what they're doing but the ones that promoting and invented the whole idea of shucking and jiving they know exactly what they're doing. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sad part about that, when well, it's people like you and I that respond to the shucking and jivers and the one that created the shucking and jiving, we waste a lot of time. Mm. When there's a lot of other people that don't want to shuck and jive that need us, you understand? Mm. Let's deal with them. Mm. Because the shucking and jivers, they're going to shuck and jive. They're going to shuck and jive their way out of a fucking life. How so? A real, a real life, because they're not being their true authentic selves. Mm. They're too busy shucking and jiving, Tim Scott. Did I say Tim Scott? Or do that microphone horn or something? Cast like him. Mm. Flavor slave and cast like him. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? You shuck a job your whole life? For what? And the end result is what? Um, there was a book that I used to teach from, the American Directory of Certified Uncle Toms. I remember that book. It was a thick one, too. It was like this. Exactly. Thing. So, yeah. It was this many <laughs> Full of shucking and jivers. Going back to the 20s, the 1910s, exactly. yeah. Tap dancing ass Negroes. So this is not mm -hmm. a new thing. No, it's not a new thing because you know how long you gonna sexually tap dance or on people's lives and then on people's graves, Puffy. How long you gonna tap dance like that? You think he's going down? Who? Who you just named? It's already there, bro. It's already there. Yeah, it's just a matter of years. Come on, that motherfucker's on a. You know the little the red uh, carts where you call those things wagons, the little yeah. wagons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they don't have brakes. Yeah. So once you hit a once you hit a steep hill. How you gonna stop? The little red flyer. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a downward it's spiral right now. Downward spiral, bro. Not even a spiral, because spiral is a kinship to spirit. Mm. And that's a haughty, negative spirit. Them little, them little wagons, they don't even have brakes, man. You understand what I'm saying? The, the old, and the, somebody else was pulling the it. The old sleds. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? We used right. to ride back in the day, the yeah, wooden yeah. ones with the. Yeah. They ain't had no brakes. And somebody else has been pulling and pushing the things. No, someone pushed that shit down that hill, bro. Mm. But he was glad to get pushed from the rear. No pun intended. You don't think it's you think it's got something to do with him going to war with that liquor company? I think I think that's when they I, decided. To I don't think on. it's that once you say it like that, people might hear that that's watching this and take that and run with it. No, I think it's a bunch of things. Because mm. that wasn't the only deal Because I could give you a list of people That made the liquor deal 
Every famous rapper you know had a liquor deal. Right. That was part of the ritual. Mm -hmm. That was part of the initiation. Right. Follow what I'm saying? Because I said it 15 years ago, and people are just now understanding it, bro. Come on. Yeah, that's why I'm being... It, yeah. it's, part of the, it's part of the ritual. It's part of the initiation. Check the people with the liquor deals. Yeah, those sponsorships are something else. There's more than sponsors. They sponsor with something else. Everyone got a handler. Mm. And if the handler say you got to do these three things, including the whole sex thing, then that's part of the ritual. That's part of the initiation. You don't get into the big league unless you go through the initiation. What, may, what about some people that's trying to turn on their handlers now and they're trying to break free? Is there a way? Yeah, the grave. They don't get out of this thing scot free. They own your soul. Do the young artists notice when they get into the industry now? I think the young artists are being very aware simply because of people like you and I, people like Black Dot, what Brother Rich and other people are talking about on their platforms now. The information is out there, bro. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they don't have to read it anymore. <laughs> mm. They can go listen to it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have advice for somebody striving to be prolific and righteous in the industry right I, now? I try not to give people advice until they tap into their God self, bro. Mm. Because to tap into the God self, you'll understand your assignment, plain and simple. And then when we meet, I can say, I'm not giving you advice, but check this out. Or check this author out. Or check this person out over here. Or, or read the autobiography of this individual. Or whatever. And then let them make up their own mind. Because you know what happens? I give the advice. They don't take the advice. And then what happens? Well, Professor Griff told me, no, nah, you're not staking that claim. Mm. Plain and simple. Because I told you, told you the proper way to throw a focus punch is like this and like that. You understand what I'm saying? You may do something different. But you say, Professor Griff taught me how to tell. And then you get cracked and you blame it on me. Don't do that. Do you experience that a lot with some, with young influential people that uh, that come to you to just get the get a little bit of the sauce and get a little bit of the wisdom and then they still don't use it? I'm I'm, I'm glad you asked that simply because these same individuals and I'm not going to mention any names use my stuff behind the scenes after they came and sat in the room and heard the conversation and know what I talk about and what I do and my name keeps coming up but they never give me credit. Like, what's going on and being talked about now, you already know. I talked about this 15 years ago, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I talked about it already. And let people know that it's coming. Mm. But yet, people don't want to say, oh, yeah, check out this guy named Professor Griff. They don't do that. They want to stick their chest out like they're the author of it. Mm. And it's like, it's sad. But I'm humble with mine. I let it fly. As long as the information get out there, I'm fine. Mm. Who's more dangerous to talk about? White people, gay people, or Jewish people? The white person that's gay that might be, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> all the, <laughs> all the above. <laughs> when you say dangerous, then what? Uh, what kind of the most repercussions and lead to your businesses if, if being I, affected? If, if I'm talking to, if I'm talking to a young person, and I'm just trying to put them up on game, or we're just having a conversation about life. I'd put them up on game and let them know. The different kind of situations that might they might want the different hurdles, you understand? Know and also in those three situations, some allies. Mm. I've, I've had some of the same three people that you just mentioned set a pick for me to do X, Y, and Z. Hmm. Both male and female, black and white. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's how you move, man. So how, how do you move? What's the, what's the... I can't tell the next person because mm. this is my life and how I got to navigate racism, white supremacy. Like, people ask me all the time about Nick Cannon. I said, okay, there was a life before that. Nick had to figure out how he moved and I got to figure out how I'm moving even after that. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's never either or for me. It's and and both. And how I have to move. You understand what I'm saying? It's no, it's no extreme love and it's no really, it's no extreme hate. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because they're probably trying to get some content out of you. Like, let me get some sensational content. Like, let me just see what you got to say about this other stuff. Talk to that man for almost two hours. How come they didn't pull anything? Mm. You know why? They'd have to go in the books to prove I'm wrong. That they don't want to do. Mm. So in order for you to dispute anything I say or to go against anything I say, you got to pull up Negroes, Negresses, you got to pull up people that's willing to speak up and speak out against me, debate me, or whatever, 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 and then present the truth. 
But right after that, three or four people came up and came out and proved exactly what I've been saying for the last 15, 20 years. I.e. Kanye West, what's the basketball player name that did his thing? Kyrie. Kyrie Irving and a few other people have proved what Professor Griff was. And even what's going on right now in Gaza. It's proved what Professor Griff said to be true. Mm. Go, 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 go back and listen to my interviews. You understand? Then they'd rather, they rather believe the word of a dead man mm. than to come and speak to me and give a deeper understanding of what I said in the 80s. You'd rather go on a dead man who dropped dead. You understand what I'm saying? On a movie set after he did what he did to me and he did what he did to me to other people. You understand what I'm saying? Until our voodoo priestess and priest got a hold of his ass and he dropped dead. Okay. All right. 